Okay, uh, today we are going to talk about the least scales problem. Uh, this is lecture 12, so in this semester we will have the uh, lecture lecture 14, right? So it means that we, we only have the three lectures left, so okay, let's keep going. So before starting, let's recap the last weeks. So in the last week we discussed the Gram Schmidt process, right? So what uh what, what was the Gram Schmidt process? Okay, so to understand the Gram Schmidt process, we 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 need some some kind of terminology such as the orthogonal projection and complement, right? So let's say we have the subspace W and the arbitrary vector Y outside the subspace W, right? Inside or outside w, outside the subspace W, right? In this case, we can represent uh, this uh, in a uh, given y vector as a uh, y hat plus z, right? So in this case, y hat is the orthogonal projection of the vector y onto the subspace W, right? So uh, generally, the this y hat is represented by the projection of the y onto the W space, right? And z. This is the compo uh, component component of the y orthogonal to w space, right? So this is the orthogonal projection and uh, component a uh, component. So so to derive the gram schmidt process, actually the gram schmidt process was the simple algorithm for producing the orthogonal or orthonormal basis for the non-zero subspace of Rn. So for example, if we have the W subspace, which is spanned by the X1 and X2, with the X1 is something like this, X2 is something like this, right? We the we want to construct the also norm, also gonal basis V1 and V2 for the subspace W, right? So because we already know the X1 and X2, then we can we can we can find out v1 and v2 from the x1 and x2, right? So the general idea is that we can start from the x1 by defining the v1 as x1, and then we can define the v2 as a component of x2, also going to x1. So what does it mean? If you see here, we want to find out the also going vector which is the span uh, perpendicular each other. So because the V1 is here, the V2 should be something like this, perpendicular vector, right? So to find out V2, we can use the projection P, which is the um, orthogonal projection of the vector X2 onto the subspace by vector V1, right? So, and then, V2 can be represented by the x2 minus p, right? So, yeah, here is the uh, formulation. So, this is the, yeah, here, this is the orthogonal projection of the vector 2 onto the subspa uh, sub subspace spanned by vector 1, right? Or the vector v1, right? So, and then this the, uh, v2, oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, it works now. So, and by subtracting x1 by this one, we can represent v2, right? So finally, v1 and v2 are also on our basis, right? So actually, this is the gram schmidt process, and then we can extend this example to the uh, higher dimensional case so in this case the so three dimensional case right so so yeah so we can start from the x1 and and then we find out x v2 by subtracting from the x2 each projection onto the subspace w1 right so it can be something like this and then V3 also can be produced by subtracting from X 
three is projection onto the subspace W two, right? So the question is some uh the formula formulation is something like this, right? So finally V one and V two and V three are represented like that. So in this in these vectors, V one and V three uh also on each other, V one and V two also on each other, and V two and V three are also on each other, right? So yeah, this is the gram schmidt process. Uh, generally, we can we can represent the gram schmidt process in a systemic way as follows. So from the x1, we can represent the v1. And with the x2 and v1, we can extract the v2. And x3, v3, and v1, and v3, v2, we can find out the v3, right? So. This is kind of the way to find out the also owner set, right? And then by just normalizing each vector to have the uh, someone, we can find out the also normal basis, right? So this is the gram schmidt process, right? So there it was the there was the property, right? So V1 through the VP is an also owner basis for, for the subway W. In addition, span by the V1 through the VK is is going to be equal to the span by X1 through the XK for the K is larger than one and uh, less than Q, right? So yeah. It was the uh it was it was the Graham Schmidt process and actually QR decomposition or the QR factorization method is closely related to the Graham Schmidt process, right? So what do, what I want to do? So we want to decompose the arbitrary vector A, the hood size is n by n at the also normal basis for the column vector uh column space A as a Q and the um upper triangular invertible matrix R, right? So this is the QR uh, QR factorization method, right? Then how can we decompose this? Because we already know how to find out the also normal basis for the arbitrary subspace. So by using the Gram Schmidt process we can decompose we can find out the also normal basis and then we can find out the uh, matrix R by product or by computing by computing with A and Q to find out the R, right? So it was the QR factorization method, right? So yeah, there was the proof like this, right? Like this, right? So yeah, here. So so there was a um uh, a similar um uh, was a simpler way to find out the QR uh matrix. So when we think about the Q, uh, when we find out the Q using the uh Gram Schmidt process something like this, then by 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 estimate the Q transpose A, then we can easily find out R, right? Then finally we can represent the matrix A into the Q matrix Q times matrix R, right? So it was the um, gram schmidt process and QR decomposition, right? So actually, today we will be, we will talk about the uh, least square problem, then actually we will use the, this kind of concept to derive the uh, least square problem, right? And yeah, let's see. So yeah, here was the problem set. So why we need the uh, risk care problem? Why we need a risk care solution? So to answer this, we can go back to the, our lecture 10, right? When I first introduced the also owner, oh, sorry. When I first introduced the also owner decomposition, uh, also owner projection, I drew some figure, something like this, right? I will explain this again. So, as I mentioned frequently, in this course, we uh, we want to find out solution of the AX equals B or analyze the AX equals B, right? System, linear system. 
So in this linear system, if there is a solution, we, we can find out the solution easily by using the, some kinds of techniques such as the LU decomposition method or the QR decomposition method or the, some kinds of the uh, invertible matrix, right? So we already discussed this. But in here, we want to interested in the A C where, where this system doesn't have any solution. So we, 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 we already know we can, we can call this system as an inconsistent system, right? So, but in some case, we might want to know the approximated solution of the, this system. Actually, it's not an exact solution, but we want to know the approximated solution. Then, question is how to find out the approximate solution. That's why we have to know the least skill solution, right? So, as you can see here, let's say there is the Rn space as a um, input uh, input signal where the x vector x is defined. Then there is the transformation matrix A. Then there is the output rm space then the here here is the column space of the matrix a right so it means that the arbitrary vector b in the column space have a exact so, uh, have the solution x here right why why because the column space of the matrix a is the linear combination of the column vectors, right? It means that there is the uh, uh, coefficient weight for each column vector. So it means that there are exact solution, right? But when you think about the vector C outside the column space, we cannot find our solution because the, there is no um, there is a no point mapped to the vector C. Right? So what I want to do is to find out the nearest point in the column space A to the arbitrary vector C, right? So if we redraw the, this one here, it will be the, this uh, subspace W will be the column space of A and this vector Y is the column back, uh, arbitrary vector C, right? So we already know the nearest point between the arbitrary vectors Y and Subspace W is the Y hat, also on a projection of the make vector Y to the W space, right? So, so the least scale, least scale solution mean by using the this, uh, this arbitrary vector Y hat, we we want to find out the solution A X equal Y hat. Okay, so. So in this case, x means the least skill solution, right? Least skill solution. So we will discuss this one in in the lecture. But yeah, this is the overall uh, overall um, overall overview of today's lecture, right? Okay, let's go back to lecture twelve. Okay, so as I mentioned previous previous slide, the inconsistent system A could B that has no solution arise often in many application almost in many almost uh, almost the application because because actually um actually when we design a system or when we analyze the real world system or the real world phenomena of the data set we can actually which not uh, um there are so many outliers or the so many uh, on on undesirable on uh, un, unexpected on uh, un, unexpected impact right so in that case we cannot guarantee there exists a solution always so we have to think about there might be no solution but we have to find out the uh, approximate solution right so so the in this case those best uh, the best thing we can do is to find out the mate uh, vector x then make the ax as close as possible to b right so let's think of the ax as uh, approximated to the b right so so in this case the general least skills problem is to find out x then make b minus the 
the length of the b minus a x as small as possible, right? As small as possible. So we already know this is, um, the satisfy this statement. To satisfy this statement, the b should be what orthogonal projection of the orthogonal projection of the vector b to the ax. What? ax. What is ax? ax is a column space, right? So this is a risk solution. Okay, let's do the same. So first of all, if the matrix A is the m by n and vector B in Rm space and the least scale solution, least scale solution of Ax equals B is on x hat in Rm space such that the length of the B minus A x hat is smaller than or equals length of the B minus Ax. For whole possible x in Rm space. Right? Actually, we already, we already see the uh, this uh, this this theorem in the lecture nine point two. It's not a nine point two. Yeah, nine. Uh, sorry, lecture ten. There was the best approximations, uh, best approximation theorem, right? So in the best approximation theorem, we already know the this y hat, the orthogonal projection of the y onto the w space is the closest point because of this uh, uh, this figure, right? We already proved this one. Actually, the today's definition is exactly the same to this one, right? So the most important aspect of the risk scale solution or the risk scale problem is that no matter what we, no matter what x we select, the vector ax will necessarily be in the column space, column space. So we will see that this one in the next slide. But so we seek the a vector x that make ax clo the closest point in the column space a to b. So what does it mean? So let's see the this figure. So okay, let's think about system A X is equal to B. But this solu uh, this system doesn't have any solution. So to find this, this one will be column space, right? Ax can make the column space and B is here, right? And what you want to do is to find out the uh, smallest point, uh, the closest point from vector B to the this column uh, column space of A, right? So in this case, what is the closest point here? What is the closest point here? This one. Perpendic when the when the a x hat is a perpendicular p minus a x hat is perpendicular to the column space of a, right? So in this case, this is the orthogonal projection. projection of P onto column space A, right? Right. So so the this definition means so the so least scale solution of AX equals B is an is an X hat X hat that satisfy this one. So it means that the risk solution of the, this system is the here, exact, right? So this is the risk solution. Okay. So how can I find this? 
we already know how can we find out the uh, orthogonal projection of the vector b onto the uh, subspace w, then we can just find out the, this x hat by using the p hat, right? We, we already know how can we find out p hat, then by using the p hat, we can just find out a hat, uh, x hat, right? That's our, that will be our strategy, right? Okay, let's do that. So given a matrix A and vector B, apply the best approximate theorem in the lecture 10, lecture 10 here, right? To subspace column space A, column space of A, right? So let's say, okay, what is the P hat? What is the P hat? We can represent the P hat as the, this one. Also on our projection of the vector B onto the column space of A, right? And we already know the P hat is in the column space A, right? P hat, P hat is in the column space A. The equation AX equals P hat AX equals B hat is the consistent, right? Because uh, P hat is in the column space A, then there exists the X hat that satisfies A X hat is equal to B. AX hat, A X hat is equal to B, something like this, right? Then the question is, we want to find out X hat that satisfies this uh, equation, right? So since the P hat is the closest point in column space A to B, right? We already know P hat is here. Then X hat, or vector X hat, X hat is the least scale solution of the A is equals B. So, so in this case, okay, there will be the input space that where X is defined. So the question is, we want to find out the vector x that satisfy this equation, right? So this is the equation one, equation one. Okay. So the to summarize the least scale solution means the vector x that satisfy the a x hat is equal to p hat, where p hat is the also on a projection of the vector b onto the column space a okay so this is the uh, general least scale solution right actually it's an, it's very intuitive but if you follow this one it might be confused if you didn't didn't follow the orthogonal projection concept so if you didn't take uh, orthogonal projections or the also normal projection thing in lecture from lecture nine, 9 to lecture 11, please, please tap here and go back to the uh, previous lecture and come back to here because it is really, really important. I would say this risk concept is one of the most important concept in this course. Okay, so please try to understand this kind of concept. Okay, so yeah, so Okay, so by the orthogonal pro decomposition theorem, what is that? What is the orthogonal projection, orthogonal decomposition theorem? What is the orthogonal decomposition theorem? So if we go back to lecture 10, yeah, there was the orthogonal projection theorem here, right? So this is orthogonal projection theorem. We can represent the arbitrary vector y as a y hat plus z, where y hat is the orthogonal projection of the vector y onto the w space, and z is the component of the y, which is the perpendicular to the subspace w, right? So this is also gonna decomposition theorem. We already know this, right? Then, okay, let's go back to lecture 12. Then, projection p hat has the property that P minus B hat is also going to column space A. So P minus B hat is also going to column space A, right? We already know this, right? So we know that P minus P, 
p minus a x hat because p hat is uh, equal to a x hat a a x hat. So p minus a x hat is also going to each vector of the a, each vector, each column, each column vector of the a. Why? Why? Because because the this column space has the faces as a column vector, right? Because the column, the definition of the column space is a linear combination of the uh, uh, column vectors, right? Then we can say that p minus a x hat is also going to each column of the a, right? So when we define the each column each column a, oh sorry, each column, yeah, a j. Then a j in a product p minus a, uh, p minus a x hat should be zero, right? Be because of this is, uh, these two. Sorry, because these two, two vectors uh, also on each other, right? Then we can represent this one again, something like this, right? Right? So we already know the column space, something like what was that? A was the m by n, right? So it should be n, and a transpose is equal to a1 transpose, a n transpose. Right, then this a transpose a here is the row of the a transpose, right? Row of the a transpose, right? So we can represent this one for every a j as a vector form, something like this, right? So please here a transpose is here, okay, here, here, right? So please follow the, this one. So, okay. So finally, we can represent the um, vector x hat as uh, this equation, a transpose times the vector b minus a x hat is equal to zero, right? Then we can, we can, we can re, um, Redescribe the this, uh, redescribe the this equation something like this, something like this, right? So a transpose b minus a transpose a x is equal to zero, right? So finally, we can say that a transpose times vector, uh, a transpose times a times x hat is equal to a transpose b, right? So this is the new equation. So from from ax equals b, we derive the this equation, right? From the this following the this kind of the uh, explain, uh, explanation, right? Then this calculation shows that each least scale solution. This each least scale solution a is equals b satisfy this equation, right? This least scale solution of the, this one is the same solution of the this equation, right? Following the this one, right? So this matrix equation represents the system of equation called the normal equation for the a is equals b. This is really important, right? So to summarize, we have the linear system a x equals b, but this linear system doesn't have any solution. But we want to find out the approximate solution as a x hat. But but uh, uh, we want to find out the x hat. So to find out this one, we 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 will we will use the also on a projection of the vector b onto the column space a. Then finally we find out the new equation something like this, 
right? So in other words, if we have the matrix A and vector B, then we can easily find out the approximate solution x hat by using the this equation, right? So this is the the normal equation. We will use the this normal equation in the um, later section, later lectures. But this is a very important concept. So a solution of the this one is often denoted by x hat, right? In here, right? Okay, so now we have the way to find out the approximate solution of the linear system that doesn't have a solution. Okay? Okay. So here, here is the definition or here's the theorem. The set of the linear square solutions so of AX equals B is coincide, coincide with the non-empty set of the solution of the normal equation A, tra A transpose A times the vector x is equal to a transpose times vector b okay so these two solution of the these two equation is the coincide i mean the least k solution of the ax equals b is the non empty solution of the normal equation is coincide because of the this property because of the this uh, uh these descriptions okay so this is very intuitive. Okay, let's see the example. So, okay, let's think about the inconsistent system, AX equals B, where the matrix A defines something like this, vector B, something like this. The, let's find out the risk solution of this system. Okay. So we already know the risk solution can be so uh, can be estimated by the this numerication okay so to use the this numerication we have to find out the a transpose a and a transpose p right so first of all let's find out the a transpose a so a is here a transpose is what here right because just uh, changing thing uh, because this uh, this just change the row and columns, right? So here, and then how can we compute this? For this value, we use this row and this column, right? For this one, we use this row and this column, right? So we know this one and this one, This for this one, this one and this one, right? We already know how to compute the matrix multiplication now, right? So yeah, and then a transpose t, a transpose B is B, A transpose here, vector B is here, then this one times this one is here, this one times this one is here. Right, there, right. So we find out the A transpose A and A transpose B, right? So, so the normal equation is here, right? So when we think about the vector x as uh, x1 through the x2, right? Then normal equation is something like this, right? We already know how to solve this, right? How, how can I solve this? We can use the low equivalent uh, algorithm or just use the determinant concept, right? Because we, we already know how to find out the inverse of the, this matrix because this is very simple, simple as a two by two matrix, then we can easily formulate a trans uh, inverse of the a transpose times a, right? Then finally, the x hat can be represented something like this, right? By multiplying the inverse of the a transpose a on left hand side and right hand side, so it will be the just x, but this part will be here, right? So inverse of the A transpose A here and A transpose B is here. Then finally, by computing this matrix and vector multiplication, we got the new vector here. By using the this term, we finally find out vector X, the least solution of the vector X should be one comma two, right? So 
this is the way to find out the least square solution. Okay, so this is very easy. Okay, let's take a break. Okay, let me continue. So we've discussed how to find out the solution of the least square problem, right? Then there is that uh, properties of the solution of the least square. So, so let matrix A be an M by M matrix, then the following statement are logically equivalent, logically equivalent, where the equation AX equals B has a unique least square solution, unique least square solution for each B in the RM space is equal to, is equivalent to the columns of the matrix A uh, linearly independent, linearly independent, and matrix A transport A is the invertible. Okay, so actually these three kinds of statements are equivalent. Okay, let's think about uh, this meaning. Uh, first of all, first of all, let's think about the this arrow. So if the mate if the statement B is true, the statement C also should be true, right? So uh, we can say that if the columns of the matrix A are linearly independent, then A X is equal to zero should have the trivial solution, right? Trivial solution of trivial solution as zero, zero vector, right? Because uh, uh, matrix uh, columns of the, column vectors of the matrix A uh, linearly independent set, right? So in this case, in this case, if we multiply A transpose to the left hand side, right hand side, A transpose A x would be equal to zero. Right, right. Then this one, because the a transpose a times x, x uh, vector x is equal to zero. Then by using the uh, what was that? Invertible matrix theorem. So okay, let's go back. So, um, it was the section five, uh, lecture 5.3, 5.3, there was the uh, invertible matrix theorem. Invertible matrix theorem. By using the matrix theorem, this equation has only has the trivial solution as a zero, right? Because here, right, then we can say that this is the A transport A is the invertible matrix, right? So it was the lecture, lecture 5.3. Please go back. So, anyway, so A transport A, A is the invertible matrix, right? What about the inverse, reverse case? If the matrix A transport A is invertible, the columns of the A are linearly independent. Okay, let's prove this one again. So, let's suppose something like that. There is the equation AX equals zero, but we, we know the solution X yet, but by multiplying A transpose on left-hand side, right-hand side, we can formulate A transpose X is equal to zero, right? But we already know X transpose, A transpose A is, equal, A is invertible, right? Then by multiplying inverse of the A transpose A on left hand side, right hand side, we can find out X is equal to zero, right? So it is just a trivial solution. So because the there is only trivial solution here, we can say that matrix A, A the columns of the matrix A are linearly independent because the, there is the only trivial solution. Okay, so. So, vector 
a statement P and statement C are equivalent to each other, right? Then, and then because uh, from the normal equation, A transpose A times X is equal to A transpose P, because the if the matrix A transpose A is the equivalent, then by just uh, multiplying the A inverse of the A transpose A on the left hand side, right hand side, then there exists the only one sol uh there is the only unique solution as a A transpose A inverse A transpose B, right? So it means that C if matrix C, uh, if the statement C is true, then the statement A should be true, right? Then what else? Then yeah. So, so in here the matrix A X has a unique solution for each V in here. Then we already know. Um, the least scale solution of the, this one as a as a uh, solution of the normal equation here, right? So, so in here, because we we already know there is a unique solution, the A transpose A should be invertible, right? So it will be equal to here, right? So this is just uh, uh, it's, uh it's just, this is just description, but we can. We can easily find out these three statements are equivalent, right? So when these three statements are true, then the least square solution x hat is given by x hat is equal to inverse of the a transpose a and a transpose b, right? So from the from the normal equation. Okay, let's rewrite again here. So from the Normal equation from the normal equation. The unique solution x hat is equal to something like this, right? So this is the theorem for the uh, least square solution. Okay, so okay. Actually, we we already discuss if we had if we have the Numeric, uh, numeric equation, we can just easily find out the solution, least square solution. But actually, there is another way to find out the least square solution. So let's think about another way. So let's say we have the linear system A is equals B for the matrix A here, vector B is here. The question is to find out the least square solution of the, this linear system, right? We can also find out the solution for this one by using the uh, normal equation, something like this. But but here, let's find, let's use the another way to find out the least square solution to understand the meaning of the least square solution. So so in here, in here, we already know by using the p hat, we can find out x hat as well right so in it means that if we can find out the project also on a projection of the vector x to the co uh, column face a then we can easily find out the this x hat right so in here let's use the this uh, strategy so first of all the column vectors a1 a2 of the matrix a are also gonna also gonna each other right then the the orthogonal projection, the orthogonal projection of the vector B onto the column space A is given by here. B hat is equal to here and here. Why? If you go back to the lecture ten, yeah, there was the uh, statement, right? So you can use the, this one. This statement, right? So anyway, so we can use this one, and we can easily compute the a in a product a one here, and b in a product a one here, a two in a product a two here, p in a product a two here, right? 
So, so it means that we can represent the P hat as a linear combination of the A2, A1 and A2, which, which, is, which are orthogonal, orthogonal base of the column space A, right? So we can find out the P hat is something like, because we already know A1 and A2, so we can find out the P hat here, right? Then the risk solution x hat should be satisfy a x hat is equal to b hat. So it means that we can solve the one 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 negative six negative two one seven and x one and x two right with the p hat negative one one. 5.5542 right so by solving the this equation we can find out the x1 and x2 right right but but we already know we already know this b hat can be represented by the linear combination of the a uh, column vector a1 and a2 so it means that we already know a1, a2 with uh, a.4 and 45 over 90, right? So you will be matrix A itself, right? So it means that here we already know this is a solution of the A is equals B hat, right? So you will be X hat will be naturally be the 2 and 1 over 2, right? So this is the another way to find out the risk of solution. So, 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 rather than using the, rather than using the normal equation itself, we can just derive the risk, risk of solution by using the orthogonal projection of the vector B onto the column space A, right? So this is the, another way to find out the risk of solution. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, in some case, the normal equation for the risk solution problem can be ill condition. Actually, you might not be familiar with the ill condition because we didn't talk about this one yet. But actually, in this course, we are we are not dealing we are not considering the this concept. But I I can just I can just say something like this. So this concept is. Co related to the condition number condition number it means that it means that small errors in the a transpose a can sometimes cause a relatively large error on the solution space right so what does it mean so a normal equation was a x equals a transpose uh, to p right but in in practice it might not be possible to find out the exact number a transpose a right because there might be some kind of measurement error or some noise or something like this right so there might be some error in the a transpose a right but because but this system uh, this equation this numeric equations uh, ill condition ill condition so small errors on here might be uh might be um might be x uh the small errors so in this in this matrix causes the largest er uh, large errors in the solution space x right so it might not be the good way to find out the risk solution so in this case in this case, the risk solution can often be computed more reliably through the QR factorization method, which was discussed in the last lecture, right? So in other words, by using the QR factorization method, we can find out the risk solution more accurately, okay? Okay, so let's think about this. So, So, given an M by M matrix A with a linearly independent columns, right? Then, 
let matrix A can be decomposed by either Q and R by using the QR factorization, right? Then for each B in RM space, the equation AX equals B has a unique least square solution, which can be solved by X hat is equal to inverse R and T transpose Q transpose B, right? So comparing to the this one, comparing to this one, now we use the R and Q to find out the least square solution. Okay, let's prove this. First of all, let's 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 suppose that x hat can be represented by the uh, r inverse and q transpose mp right then by multiplying the a on the left hand side so a x hat will be q r x hat right because the x a can be represented by q r right then x hat from here q r r hat q transpose b right so we already know the r and r inverse should be what should be Id identity matrix right so there exist q times q transpose b right so yeah so the columns of the matrix q form the also normal basis for the column space of a what does it mean so if we go back to the definition of the qr it was something like this right so q is the uh the Q is the M by M matrix whose columns form the also normal basis for the column space A by solving solving solved by the Gram Schmidt process, right? So we already know we already know the columns of the Q form the also normal basis, right? So therefore the Q times the Q transpose B here here is the orthogonal projection B hat of the P onto the column space A, right? So, so what does it mean? So, okay, let's go back to the, it's not, where was that? Um, uh, maybe, oh, where is that? I found out the similar here yeah so it is in the lecture 10 here so there was a theorem so if we you put the uh, uh, set of the vectors uh, also normal basis for the subspace w then we can represent of the orthogonal projection of the arbitrary ma uh, arbitrary vector y onto a w space as a u times u transpose y right so why because the orthogonal decomposition theorem can be represented something like this so by summarizing the this concept we can represent the projection something like this right in today's lecture we will use this concept so if we go back to lecture 12 this one q 
times Q transpose B is also one projection of the B onto the column space A. Okay. So, so A X hat is equal to P hat, right? Because the because the P hat, yeah, this is a P hat, right? So, so in this here. X hat will be the least square solution of the AX, right? So, finally, in reversely, AX equals B, least square solution of AX equals B can be represented by this one, right? So, yeah, this is the proof of the, this theorem. Of course, by using the uh, theorem of theorem, theorem here, we can easily find out the uniqueness of the x hat. Why? Because the we assume that the matrix A is the linearly independent has the linearly independent column. So we can say that the this uh, uh, this solution x sh hat should be uniqueness. Should be unique, right? Okay. So this is the alternative way to find out the risk solution, right? So. I didn't prepare the uh, exercise for the this uh, this theorem, but we can easily use the this theorem. So, if we have the matrix A and vector B, where A x equals B doesn't have any solution, then first thing we can do we can decompose A as a Q R. Then we can find out x hat is q solution x hat as a r transpose q transpose and p p is here right so it will be the uh, another way to find out the risk solution okay so yeah in today's lecture we talked about the risk problems and risk solution so actually this is the end of the section six in the in our textbook right so uh, we now we have the two lectures left two two lectures left in this course in this semester so um actually actually the eigenvector and eigenvalue decomposition which will be discussed later is the sec uh, section five right, and the this one risk scale solution or the also projection uh, was the section six right. But we we first think about the section six and then we will derive the section five topics something like the eigenvalue decomposition, eigenvalue uh, fact, eigenvalue decomposition and single value decomposition things. Okay, so. Uh, let's do. Uh, let's finish the remaining things, okay. And by the way, we will have the uh, offline. We will have the offline final exam. So actually, as you know, we didn't have the, any exam in the midterm period, right? So we will have the offline exam in the uh, public op uh mid uh public public final exam weeks maybe after three weeks so i will let you know soon our uh, our our opprime opprime final exam room or the time so before that please prepare the final exam as soon as possible so um the scope of the final exam will be the entire part of the our course Right, so it means that from the lecture one to the lecture, maybe, uh, maybe lecture six, right? So you, please, you it might be hard to. It might be hard to, uh, study the everything within the few days. So, I suggest please start as soon as possible, to understand from the our lecture one to the through the lecture six. Okay, okay. So I will let you know soon and. Then let's see the uh, third day. Thank you.